And as we can see, we have this that's in between of 0 and 0. So we can come here and conclude that this is equal to 0. So this is just a continuation from the previous video. Here, I just want to talk about that when we use the polar coordinates to evaluate the limit of a multivariable function, we have to be extra careful. So this is the one that we did in the previous video. We have the limit as x, y approaching the origin, x to the third power over x squared plus y to the fourth power. Now, for this one though, I just changed this to x to the fourth power and then plus y squared. Okay, let's use the polar coordinates. When we have x, y approaching the origin, we can just say r is approaching 0. x is r cosine theta, and that's to the third power. Likewise here, we have r to the second power cosine to the second power, plus y is r sine theta to the fourth power. And notice, right here, we can factor out the r squared. So here, I can cancel out this with one of them. So we will end up with r to the first power here, and cosine to the third power over this. Similarly though, if we do the same thing, here we are factoring out r squared, same thing, yeah? But notice here we have r to the fourth power. So here we have r squared times cosine to the fourth power. And here we will cancel out r squared and two of them. So we end up with this. So if you look at the structure, both of them have r cosine to the third power on the top. And right here, okay, we have cosine squared theta plus r squared sine to the fourth power theta. And here, r squared times cosine to the fourth power plus sine squared theta. So it's almost like the same situation, right? Last time I told you guys that here, if we put 0 to r, then we will get 0 times this is just 0. Now let's just say here we have 0 and here we have 0. 0 times this is just 0 because cosine is in between of negative 1 and 1. Likewise, once we raise that to the third power. So this, we can say we get 0 over this right here. Again, sine is in between of negative 1 and 1. Once we raise that to the fourth power, it's in between of 0 and 1. But it's just 0 times anything that's bounded, so this part is also 0. But for that part, though, we have cosine squared theta. Now, for this one right here, it's the same idea, huh? Put 0 in here, 0 over... Now, this part will be 0, and for this part, we will have to add the sine square theta. And of course, right here, last time I told you guys, hmm, we cannot say this is just equal to zero because this expression is bad depending on what theta is. Remember, x, y is approaching the origin that only tells us r is approaching zero. Theta can be anything. This will be bad if theta is equal to cosine of pi is equal to zero. Pi over two, for example, right? Pi over two, and I can have another one that say negative, well, let's just do, you can also have negative pi over two, but let's say three pi over two, and a lot more. Otherwise we get zero over zero, right? Because cosine of these values will be zero, okay? Likewise, for this one row, hmm, it would be bad if what? Cos uh, sine for what is equal to zero? This is bad if theta equals zero because sine zero is zero, uh, pi, and so on, so on, so on. Last time I told you we cannot draw a conclusion. We have to use the squeeze theorem, and then we end up this as equal to zero. And the way that we did it is by the squeeze theorem. So make sure you check out the previous video for this. And I would like to tell you for this right here, even though we have zero divided by this, it seems like we just end up with zero, but no, this right here, the answer, it actually does not exist. Why is that though? Last time, squeeze theorem works. This time, you can try it and I'll tell you, the squeeze theorem 
wouldn't work. So how do we take care of a limit that doesn't exist? Remember, we always have to show two paths and the function along those two paths gives us different limits. That's how we show the limit does not exist. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we go. Here, when we have x, y approaching the origin, let's take a look at a quick picture. And I want to show you guys a quick and easy path first. So and that is along the y-axis, like this. So along the y-axis means we have to come up with an equation that means x is equal to 0. So with that being said, we can just plug in 0 into all the x's right away. So here, we look at the limit. Because x is already equal to 0, we just have to say y is approaching 0. And then put 0 into the x here and here. So we get 0 to the third power over 0 to the fourth power plus y to the second power. Now, of course, this right here is just equal to y squared, like that doesn't matter. And this is just the limit as y approaching 0. 0 to the third power is 0 over y squared. Now, the key here is that we are going to do this inside out. Do not just plug in 0 right here, okay? Make sure you just work this out. And in fact, when y is approaching 0, y is not exactly equal to 0, okay? So, do this inside out, 0 over y squared, that's just equal to 0. Then we take the limit as y goes to 0, well, it's just 0. So, so, along x is equal to 0, the limit is equal to 0. Done. Now, I'm just going to choose the x-axis instead, like why not, huh? So here, let's go along the x-axis. So that means I want an equation for that which is y is equal to 0. So when I plug in 0 into y, we will get the limit as x approaching 0, and then we have x to the third power over x to the fourth power plus 0 squared. That doesn't matter. And then we can reduce this. So this is just limit as x approaching 0 of 1 over x. Now what? Well, when we have x approaching 0, in fact, we are talking about two different paths already, right? Because we can approach 0 from the left-hand side or from the right-hand side. In fact, this right here does not exist. I will just work this out real quick. Because if the limit as x approaching 0 plus 1 over x, Plugging 0 plus in here, positive 1 divided by 0 plus, we get positive infinity. And if you plug in the limit as x approaching 0 minus, we get negative infinity. Or if you just look at the graph of 1 over x, you get this. So this is the good limit that we did from calc 1. So the truth is, if you start with the path along y is equal to 0, you can actually just show this and say it does not exist. But I did want to just show you guys that two different paths, just for that. So as you can see though, 0 and does not exist. Of course, this is enough to show this thing right here doesn't exist. So be really careful. Sometimes if you end up with 0 on the top over like cosine theta, sine theta, you really don't know what you can say. The only way that you can say when you use the polar uh, method is that when you have r times something that's bounded. Make sure you check out my previous video if you haven't done so already, because in that video I showed you the methods that you should know for evaluating the limit of a multivariable function.